Greetings, unsettled souls. Sam I.B. the Ganji doing political commentary for the Media Speaks. Some of you might know me from Wits News, The Blasting News, even lately, uh, Roll Magazine. I want to welcome everyone aboard. Thank you for listening this fine Easter. Um, Resurrection Sunday. I don't know um, how many of you have, uh, interesting question, how many of you have gone out for Easter? Did you go to church? Um, I have an interesting story about that while everyone's uh, trickling in. The church that I go to had their church in the parking lot. And unless you didn't have transportation, they encouraged you not to come in. That was me and three other people in the entire building. So I actually went to church and stayed under the uh, the uh, 10 people rule, which is funny considering the fact that it's a rather large church. So that happened. Um, it was enjoyable. Um, I want to say a word about families. If you have somebody who cares about you, somebody who you genuinely love, make sure you snuggle up extra close today. Make sure you don't let the holiday go by without letting them know how much they matter to you. Because things things can happen rapidly. I mean, I'm not, it's, a, it's the Fukushima update, I get it, but it's also Easter. And I would be remiss as your humble host if I did not mention that. Because things can change rapidly. And the people to whom meant the very most to you may no longer be with us or may very be quite healthy and simply not be with you so make sure that everyone who you cherish knows it because uh again christ raises uh, himself from the dead but not necessarily all situations all right friends uh then again who knows uh friends you're listening to the correct views and we're gonna go on to the massive fukushima update I want to remind listeners, if I could, that all of this is listener-supported. Usually, the money that you give to me, I put directly back into the show. However, with the corona outbreak, things have been a bit tight. So if you would like to donate to the show, if you'd like to help out what I do, if you enjoy what I do and like to keep more of it, um, I'm going to go ahead and give you a chance to donate here at the correct views at hotmail.com. Do that through PayPal, the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. And uh, I promise you, uh, it will be greatly appreciated. If I get a couple people, do two people, two people. If I get two people that donate because of this particular broadcast, I'll do a 420 show. How's that? I haven't done the funny Buddy Puff character. It was something that was from when the show was the way it used to be, particularly when Christelle was with it. It was a much different show. Perhaps it's a bit more serious in some ways now, a bit more dry, and I think that that is reflected by her absence in the show. But I will do a 420 update, uh, perhaps not in the Buddy Puff character, which I haven't done, but I will definitely, haven't done in a while, I will definitely... Uh, give you guys a, a 420 update show. Two people donate at the correct views at hotmail.com. All right, I've babbled. I've allowed everyone to trickle in. And now we're going to go straight into the massive Fukushima update. Friends, this is from uh, AccuWeather. I hear people all the time. They ask me, why does it matter what happened in Japan in 2011? It was almost nine years ago. I'm able to do math. I really am. And uh, nine years, seconds. Mere seconds compared to how long the toxins that are caused by nuclear power will be in the air. Not just Fukushima, but nuclear power plants, even when they run, run correctly, leave massive toxins in the air. Well, we also know that one of the meltdowns that happened at Fukushima happened because of the earthquake. And it wasn't caused, I mean, by the tidal wave. It wasn't caused by anything other than the earthquake. And the reason that that is important is it proves that an earthquake can override um, 
backup systems, generators, that kind of thing. And we know uh, there's a push, you know, what if we didn't build nuclear power plants on the ocean? Which, of course, is something that they unwisely do because they need to cool them to such a high degree. But even if you were to move them in other places, there are instances like this. AccuWeather, today's magnitude 6.5 earthquake in Idaho. Idaho? For those of you that don't know, you don't get many earthquakes in Idaho. It was felt as far away as Seattle and Spokane, Washington, Missoula, Montana, and the Salt Lake City. And uh, the latest info is on that. They had a tweet about it. And uh, when you follow the tweet, it takes you directly to their page. And this is it's worth pointing out that this was a significant earthquake. This wasn't, I mean, a 6.5 is a pretty good shaker. It's not like it was something minute and unimportant. Again, it's Idaho. The preliminary magnitude 6.5 earthquake rattled Idaho on Tuesday, shook regions as far away as uh, Washington State, even Canada, Nevada. It was a mover, friends. And uh, the it said it was the strongest that the state has had since 1983, the Bora Peak earthquake. And that actually killed two people. So I hope my, uh, my general message here and opening with the earthquake, and we have all kinds of things to get to, poison sandbags and everything else. There's debris in the street if you go to the video and you can see exactly what the earthquake did. Um, they even had a 4.8 aftershock that hit uh, approximately 23 miles southeast at, at Chalice, Idaho. And there's uh, there's ample reason to be concerned here. We should, again, go to the AccuWeather site, and uh, there is a briefing about it as well. It's worth checking out, friends. As it pertains to Japan, we have uh, NHK World Japan here, uh, plan to dispose of Fukushima wastewater drafting. Now, for those of you that have followed my show with even minimal interest, you're well aware that we have covered this for quite some time. The actual plans as to how they're going to release water, which will be cancer-causing, which will cause span cancer rates to spike even higher, which will create heart issues. I, I, I'm so tired of people getting a hold of me and saying, well, I'm not afraid to die. You're an idiot. You're not just going to die. You're not just going to die. Whatever time that you're cursed to be alive for, you're going to be miserable. You're going to be catching every cold that comes down the pike. You're going to be putting yourself at constant uh, misery, in constant misery, catching everything, having strange illnesses and... Um, Symptoms that they can't diagnose cropping up. Why? Accumulative radiological poisoning. That's why. That's why we never saw the cancer rates that we are seeing now prior to the invention of the nuclear bomb. We released elements on the earth that were not even here when we got here thanks to that. And they're toxic. Most toxic elements known in the universe. And NHK has learned that TEPCO Electric Power Company TEPCO, GE, where you never invest. They do not bring good things to life. Uh, they have drafted a plan to, uh, for disposing of radioactive wastewater stored at the troubled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Water used to cool the molten, molten nuclear fuel from 2011 accident is treated to remove most of the radioactive material, but the tritium and other substances remain in the water, and they do not know how to get it out. They can get some radioactive molecules out of water, but not tritium. And a huge amount of water is stored in about 1,000 large tanks. So Temco's plan for do, getting rid of this, uh, diluting it, as they say, which doesn't happen. Dilution is not the answer to pollution. Um, their plan for doing this is aiming for a tritium level of 140th that allowed by a national regulation. Now, that's a play on words because the national regulation has been raised to unhealthy levels in order to deal with the disaster. So they raise it to levels which they know are not healthy, 
and then call them safe, and then years later use those as the numbers to say that it's safe according to regulations. That's how that works. So that's how you get toxins, which should never be released into the ocean for any reason, released into the ocean. The firm would gradually release the diluted water over about 30 years, taking into consideration the amount of similar water released at other nuclear power plants. The trouble is, all of this water released at all nuclear power plants are always cancerous. They always do the things that I have told you about so far in this broadcast and for many broadcasts that deal with this. They are not safe. Other nuclear power plants doing it does not make it right here. And the problem is not only do they all need to be shut down and eradicated, but it also needs to be taught to everyone that this is why you do not build them to start with. They just admitted in that very sentence that they're toxic even when they run properly. What more do you need? Again, if you want to donate, you can do so at the correct views of hotmail.com through PayPal. This is this is maybe the most frightening story that I'm going to get to on this particular update today. It's from the Telegraph. Fukushima sandbags found to contain enough radiation to kill a person in a month. Nuclear power plant decommissioning postponed after the radiation setback once again. Again, we don't even have the technology to get close to the core or anything like that. And they talk about 30 to 40 years to shut it down. Based on what? We have to invent so many things that do not even exist before that could be something that's even contemplated that it's not even worth saying that it's going to happen in that time frame. We don't know that that's anything but wishful, foolish thinking. It's possible it could never be able to be dealt with. Very likely. Work to decommission and decontaminate Japan's Fukushima nuclear plant is being delayed by hundreds of sandbags that have absorbed potentially lethal levels of radiation. Of course, they didn't move them throughout the uh, time that they were put there. Uh, because they didn't want to get people near it, of course, but also due to a massive amount of ineptitude and forward thinking. And yet we're supposed to believe that they're forward thinking enough that we can count on them to solve this problem within 30 to 40 years. The amount of toxicity that has already been released into the country has God only knows sickened countless people. You factor in that kind of a time frame, it just gets more grim, grimmer and grimmer, friends. Hundreds of sandbags containing zeolite, a porous material, were placed in the basements of buildings close to the three reactors at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant that suffered meltdowns after the earthquake and tsunami in March of 11. 2011, that would be for... <laughs> the mineral was able to absorb cesium, and emergency teams used the basement levels to store water that had been sprayed on the reactor shrouds to keep them cool. The water also came into contact with the radioactive material that had escaped from the chambers. Now, the reason that this is important is that they have found that this is enough radioactivity to kill a person, a healthy person, in one month. One month. And yet, we still have people that are pushing for nuclear technology when all of this could have been prevented just by listening to the people who had warned about this prior to 2011. They warned about building a nuclear power plant in Japan, yes, but they also warned about nuclear power in general, the bigger picture here, which is why it's imperative that if nothing else is taken away from these shows, is that there that all of you listening to this learn there is no safe nuclear power. There is no safe nuclear power, and under no circumstances should it ever be endorsed. Plain and simple. It's that easy, it's that cut and dry, and those that don't agree with that are simply wrong. And the data and facts prove it. The only way you can find people that disagree are those who use fake facts which is an oxymoron, those who use fakery, I should say, and those who push numbers and information that is put out there by the very people who have a vested interest in hiding the toxic truth for the good of the bottom dollar. 
Um, I got two more to get to, friends. I'm not going to keep you real long on Easter here. Fukushima mothers record, record excuse me, radiation for future generations. And this is from a Kyoto News. English.kyotonews.net to get it in English. Imagine that. Unless you speak Japanese. I'm very happy to see this. This prevents the nuclear industry from being able to cover it up. Uh, the toxicity and it also prevents what I was just addressing a moment ago which is the way that the nuclear industry uses fraudulent information to push an agenda this way by mothers recording it and other people recording it the levels they can compare those to charts and graphs which were put out prior to Fukushima prior to when the bottom dollar was worshipped and they can look at the toxicity, the cancers, the heart diseases, the, uh, the, the lack of a just basic solid immune structure. They can look at the studies that found that kind of toxicity prior to Fukushima at levels that are much smaller than what they're recording. And that is another way that they can prove the lies which are extant and uh, being given as facts all around them. Hawaii, Japan. A group of more than 10 mothers set up a citizen-led laboratory to monitor radiation levels in Fukushima communities only months after a massive earthquake and tsunami caused meltdowns at the uh, power plant. And again, this is, uh, this is from April 10th of 2020. It's just going into why this was done. Since the founding of on November 13th, 2011, the Institute has been recording and disclosing radiation data on foodstuffs and soil, because again, they're, they're using techniques here with the foodstuffs and the soil. They're either giving fake numbers as to what is safe, or they're not testing for certain radionuclides, which they know will show up. Rather, they're testing for ones that they know decay and very much, uh, or very likely won't be found in the food or in the soil. And by testing for all of the thousands of elements, you're able to get a better risk because all of them are deadly, all of them are carcinogenic. If the risks of nuclear power had been thoroughly verified by the previous generations, I think that the disaster would not have happened. Well said, said Kaori Suzuki, 54, an executive of Mother's Radiation Lab Fukushima, which is based, as I said, in Oahu. She said it during a recent interview. And she goes on, but since it did not occur, but since it did occur, what we, she means the disaster, what we must do now is record our measurements and changes in the environment so that we don't make the same mistake. In other words, stopping nuclear power plants, not only from reopening, but hopefully in getting more and more of them to close, to shut, to shut down for good. She's one of the founding members. She says, uh, passing down something that will be useful when major decisions must be made is the only thing we can do. There, God bless her. The laboratory of 18 staff members, many of them mothers, were mostly had no who mostly had no prior experience in measuring radiation, have trained themselves with support from scientists. So it's not just like they learned, you know, from the back of a Cracker Jack box. Uh, they train themselves with the support of scientists. And they now gauge levels of cesium-134, cesium-137, tritium, and of course we all know Mr. Bone Cancer, strontium-90, with five types of machines. Also very bad for the lymphatic system. Samples that they have measured include dust and vacuum cleaners, vegetables grown in home gardens, seasonal mushrooms picked in mountains, and soil gathered in parks. Remember, uh, filters in vacuum cleaners, car filters, particularly in areas where radiation is high, California, Oregon, Washington, Japan, areas where hot particles are a significant risk. That's a big deal. And also, I've been telling everyone since the disaster started, avoid mushrooms. I mean, Maybe if it's Easter, you can uh, and let yourself enjoy, but try and avoid mushrooms because mushrooms soak up radiation like a sponge, and they're one of the most toxic things to eat post-Fukushima. And many of the 
well-documented health benefits of mushrooms are negated by the toxicity that is absorbed into them as they soak up radiation from the soil. And this is not just true in Japan. Yeah, of course, avoid Japanese mushrooms, but avoid mushrooms and likewise cheese, which absorbs cesium. I would, uh, and strontium 90, I would avoid them pretty much indefinitely after this. And if that makes you happy, instead of calling me crazy, call the people crazy who caused it and do what I'm doing and stand against nuclear. It's that simple. It says the mothers have occasionally detected radiation above safe levels, which of course were raised anyway, and are not safe. And lab reports, and reports the lab releases every month on its website, and they have specified which machine is used and other details for each outcome to make their activities as transparent as possible. Their efforts have made academic contributions as well with their measuring methods and results published in scientific journals such as Applied Radiation and Isotopes in 2016. Suzuki said they started the initiative out of desperation to protect their children, I would argue to protect anyone. We had to measure and eat it. It was a matter of life or death, said Suzuki, the mother of two. As of April 6th, 468 people in Milwaukee, about 50 kilometers uh, south of the crippled Fukushima plant, have died as a result of the events of 2011. More than 20,000 remain evacuated in and outside the city. I think it's important to, to note here that when you're talking about any kind of radiation levels at all, you have to remember that they've found trillions of becquerels, which is trillions of nuclear explosions happening inside the body per second. That's what a becquerel is. Trillions of becquerels of radiation near the plant. So obviously anything raised, grown, or produced in that area, and we'll get to that in a minute, is particularly worrisome, to, to, to put it mildly. Naruko Tanaka, 40, who joined the group, it says, in May of 2018, said that studying radiation levels has changed how she perceives the environment around her. You don't need to fear everything randomly. Rather than worrying about everything and being stressed out by that, measuring and seeing the data will make you relieved to find that some things are safer than you presumed, which is good to know as long as you're testing for all of the radionuclides with each of the instruments that you have. Otherwise, that would negate that whole sentence. On the other hand, if you find a highly contaminated spot, she continues, for example, in a park where you thought was safe to play, you can take precautionary measure, measures such as, taking your, such as not taking your child there. Tanaka, who after the disaster temporarily fled from Milwaukee to her husband's home in Satima Prefecture, where she should have stayed, found out during the evacuation that the couple were expecting their first child. Uh, she hoped to relocate elsewhere for safety, but with gaps between family members and recognizing risk, her family eventually returned to Milwaukee, which was simply foolish. Um, She said, unfortunately, few and fewer people are discussing uh, radiation effects. At that time, of course, and she's talking about uh, the time that she was pregnant, the common atmosphere was, do we need to do that? I was pregnant and couldn't live on my own. I couldn't choose that. I had no choice but to be in Milwaukee. Yeah, you did, by living anywhere else, you don't. But anyway, the number of citizens brought in last year was 1,573, up 131 from the year before. And it's showing a decreased trend because people aren't as worried about this, even though and it's due to people not understanding or just refusing to accept the grim truth that in terms of most radioactive elements, this disaster happened two minutes ago. It's still spewing from the neutron star that lives in our planet known as the nuclear disaster of Fukushima. She said the Olympic Games are coming and there are fewer media reports on radiation levels than before, of course, because they're covering it up. Japanese officials have dubbed the Tokyo Summer Games the Reconstruction Olympics. I'm very happy personally that they were canceled because you cannot reconstruct in an area as toxic as that. You can only lie and say that it's uh, okay to reconstruct in an area as dangerous as that. There is, there is no other truth. I'm giving you the truth. 
this is the truth. That which I am speaking is the truth. And if someone is saying something else, then you know that they are lying to you and that you are not getting the truth because the truth as it pertains to radioactivity is spelled out for you right here with sources. They're constantly checking and rechecking the health of uh, everyone. And it says the disaster is not over yet. Of course it's not. And that is what nuclear technology brings. It also brings the dumbie of the day. You are an idiot. The dumbie of the day. Friends, if you want to donate to the correct views at hotmail.com, that would be the correct views at hotmail.com, then please do so at that address. Imagine that. The correct views at hotmail.com. Do it through PayPal. And I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, the COVID 19 outbreak is uh, been less than kind to yours truly. Uh, friends, DW.com, the sake brewers of Fukushima. That's like saying the proud Nazi Jews. Or it's like saying the safe arsenic. How about the, the oh, what would be a good one? The rat Pepsi Coke. Does that have sound healthy? That is what Fukushima sake means. And I'm firsthand, my, my wife and I liked uh, Fuki. It was an amazing plum sake. We even had it at our um, a wedding reception. We get it at a place called the Bistro here. When her and I would go out to eat, we would very rarely, if ever, continue to get that sake. And we did so usually only on the rare occasions that we went to the Bistro. And that's because it is deadly. But in order to hide it, they're just going to produce um, sake, rice wine. They're going to produce sake from that area, knowing that it's in the soil at toxic levels. Make sake out of it, test for one or two elements that they know won't show up, tell you that it's safe, and if they can't get all of the radioactivity to line up, then they'll just have the government raise the numbers so that they can sell it to you and tell you that it's safe when it's poisoning you. The alcohol does nothing to your liver compared to what radiation does. The alcohol is like a, you know, a, a, almost a health food by comparison. One region in Japan has a long tradition of making the highest quality sake around. The only problem, the region is Fukushima, home of the worst disaster, the worst disaster in uh, nuclear history. Friends, one of the worst disasters. No, it is the worst. The reason I mention this, and there's a video on it here, is you have to remember that because these producers did not step up and stop the nuclear industry from opening there, they can never produce sake there again. That will be anything but deadly. There is no other way to word it in which it's magically going to be okay. And when you watch the video, you just cringe. You ju it's only a minute and 49 seconds. Again, DW. Over the years, Yoshihiro Miyamori's flagship sake, Sharaku, has become one of Japan's most popular sake brands. Even though it's poison. After the earthquake and the following tsunami in 2011, nuclear reactors in Fukushima started melting down and radioactive material was released we know from the damaged reactors. So I'm gonna skip that. that caused why people were worried. About us using rice and water from Fukushima. We have been told about their concerns many times. Nine years on, fears over radioactive contamination in food continue. But in spite of that, Fukushima is still the most renowned prefecture in Japan for making sake. Brewers here. If you drink sake from this area, you damn near deserve what happens to you, particularly if you know it's from the area. You know, again, I understand a treat or two, then maybe not, but this is ridiculous. And it's very hard for me to find copious amounts of sympathy for people that engage in such stupidity. It just is. Um, and what bothers me more is that the level of evil, you want to talk about Resurrection Sunday, you want to talk about what evil is. The level of evil 
that would uh, listen to this as I close out here, the level of evil that would purposefully sell this to product to people under the guise of it being safe are the epitome of evil. They're taking advantage of pe the fact that most people aren't educated enough to know any better. They're not listening to this show. They're not looking up the facts I give you to learn prudent knowledge. And on top of that, they are more concerned about the bottom dollar. That to me, that, you know, not to me, and it is, not, it, it, irrespective of me, it is the epitome of evil. It is every bit as evil as what uh, the leaders of the Chinese Communist Party did by hiding the COVID-19 virus and the fact that it was uh, transmittable from human to human. They've caused how many hundreds of thousands of illnesses and lives and misery now? Well, you know what? So did Japan. And China may or may not get away with it. A lot of the world knows what China did. Most of the world does not understand what TEPCO, General Electric, and Japan have done. And again, America as well. But you know because you listen to the correct views. And I thank you for doing so, friends. Good night. God bless. Please, again, I said at the beginning of the show, if you're with someone you love this Easter, hug them, hold them, and let them know how much you care. Because quicker than a nuclear meltdown, they could be gone. Thank you, friends. Good night. God bless. Don't forget to donate at the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. Hip, hip, hippity hop. Bunny music, something like that. TikTok videos, maybe.